Okay, once again we'll use a FET simulation to represent a series circuit. Now what I've done here is I've connected a battery to a switch and then some wires which is represented by these brown lines here. These wires all hook up to a resistor and then I've got a light bulb in there to show us whether or not the current's flowing. If the light bulb's on we've got current, if it's off we don't have current. And then some more wires back to the battery. Now this is not a schematic, this shows the actual parts in a circuit. If we saw a schematic, we'd use our symbols as follows. Our battery would be represented by this long and short line. Our switch is just an open gap with a little switch on the top. Our resistor, as usual, looks like a, a zigzaggy shape. And then there's our light bulb at the top of the page. We'll leave it lifelike for this simulation because we want to discuss what a series circuit is, in fact. Now, if there's only one possible path for the current to flow, we say that the circuit is a series circuit. So if you look at this circuit carefully, the current's going to come out of the battery, flow through this switch once it's closed, up this wire, through the resistor, then through the light bulb, and then back to the battery. There's no branching off of the paths. It only has this one possible route. So we call that a series circuit, one possible path for the current to flow. Now I'll close the switch and we'll see how that looks. And you can see barely the light bulb lights up. I don't know if you can see those little lines. You might have to maximize your screen to see those little lines. If we like, we can actually see the electron flow. And you can see they're barely moving. Now remember, electron flow is opposite to conventional current flow. It doesn't really matter. I like this analogy because it shows the electrons as sort of bumper to bumper traffic. If one electron comes out of the battery, it's going to repel the one in front of it and so on and so on and so on all the way around like a chain all the way back to the battery. So we can see for this given arrangement, the flow is quite small. Now if I want to increase the flow, increase the current, one thing I can do according to Ohm's law is crank up the voltage that the battery has got. So if I right click on my battery, and I crank it up, watch what happens. See, first of all, you can see the light bulb gets brighter as more current flows, and you can actually see the electrons moving more quickly. So as the voltage increases, the flow increases as expected. But let's look at our effect with resistance. So I'll leave this voltage here, and we'll go to my resistor, and I'll change the resistance value, and I'll start cranking it up. So right now it's around 25 ohms, and if I start to increase the resistance, once again, you see that the flow, the movement of these electrons, the current, gets slower and slower and slower and slower as I increase the resistance and the bulb gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. So probably nothing unexpected there. Now the question we want to answer is what happens to the overall current flow if we add another resistor in series? So to do that, we'll measure the original current flow and if we see some of our values here, we see I've got a 50 volt battery supply, battery source, a 40 ohm resistor, and roughly a 10 ohm bulb. And if I put my current meter over there, it's around 1 amp, 0.99 amps to start with. Now, don't worry about the numbers for now. Let's just see what happens to the current as we add another resistor. Now, from Ohm's law, we know that as the resistance increases, like if I increase this resistor, the current should decrease. We have an inverse relationship. As the resistance gets bigger, the current gets smaller. So let's, let's see what happens when we add one in series. So here you can see I've added an additional resistor, an additional 40 ohm resistor in series with the other 40 ohm resistor and the bulb. And if you recall, the flow before was a little faster and it was about one amp. And if I put my current meter over it now, it's dropped to about 0.55 amps. So the current is lower which means the resistance has increased. So as I've added a resistor in series, the overall resistance of the circuit goes up. The overall bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic flow, everything has to slow down. Notice it's 0.55 amps here. If I go on the other side of the bulb, it's still 0.55 amps. In between the two resistors, 0.55. Just coming into the switch, 0.55. No matter where I go on that circuit, the current is the same. And that's another characteristic of a series circuit. The current throughout that line has to be the same because it's bumper to bumper traffic. If part of this section was going faster than another part, the traffic would pile up and the wire would burst. So it all has to be flowing in a chain reaction together. So it all slows down together or it all will speed up together depending on what we're doing with the resistances. Let's add one more resistor in series and see if we can confirm our results. 
Okay, so here you can see I've added one more resistor in series, another 40 ohm resistor. And if I hit run, we see the traffic flow, the bumper to bumper traffic is nice and stable throughout the wire. It's the same everywhere, but it's definitely slower than it was. Now before it was 0.55 amps with this additional resistance, it's now dropped to 0.38 amps. And once again, that 0.38 amps is the same no matter where I am in that circuit. The traffic flow is consistent throughout. So to summarize, as we add resistors in series, the overall resistance increases, meaning the overall current decreases.